Well, good morning, everyone. This is gonna be the first vlog that I'm gonna do, and I couldn't have picked a better trip to start it with. This is a trip that I look forward to from three days from now when we get back, all year round until today, when we go on the dude's fishing trip to Canada. We all load up in a Winnebago, we drive eight hours north into Canada, and fish our brains out for a couple of days. This trip is gonna be epic. I've got all my reels and my rod, and in this bag is all my filming equipment, GoPros, connector cables, battery chargers, whatever, clothes and my whatever. I always overpack and then wind up wearing half of what I always pack. But anyway, tackle box in uh, complete disarray. That's fantastic. That's good. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm all ready to go on the fishing trip. So they're going to be here to pick me up in about five minutes and we'll see you on the road to Canada. So we uh, obviously made it to Canada, and uh, it's our first night here, and there's just such an incredible serenity to this place. The air is sweet. I bet air was like this before the Industrial Revolution. You can't smell exhaust or industry or city. There really is a sweetness to the air up here. And just think how many chemicals go into the products that we use at home to make it smell as fresh as it naturally does up here. So we're here for three days. Tomorrow morning we wake up early, we go fishing. Tomorrow's Canada Day, so we're gonna go into uh, town and uh, celebrate Canadian style. So every time we come to Canada, we always come to the same place. It's Totem Resorts in Suneros, Ontario. And this place has everything. Mounted fish on the wall, right down to the mounted moose head over the fireplace. It's been a family tradition in my family since my dad was 13 years old to come to Canada on the fishing trip. It's my brothers, it's my nephew, it's my cousins. Every single year we're up here on this fishing adventure. And there's so much natural beauty to this place. This is really one of my happy places in the world. It is, it's just pure serenity here. Five thirty in the morning, and I'm still half asleep. But it's gorgeous out here. The sunrise, the mist off the water, the ravens out there singing and playing. This is absolutely what I love about being up here. No one's up in camp yet. 
I'm gonna go see if there's coffee made. I'm ready for a day of fishing. Seeing what's out in the woods. It's beautiful. I love it. Just love it. All right, so I've got all the fishing gear ready and we're heading out to the boats. Today's gonna roll. Landed at our first fishing spot, and I've got my leech. This guy is gonna catch a walleye. Big walleye, back to Canada. Ah yes, that's the way to do it. Yes. <laughs> oh wait, I oh, think those oh, are oh, oh gosh, you can be in the photo album. What a shiny head that is. That's right. That's right. awesome. This is literally walleye number 45 for me this morning. Is that wrong? How many did I catch? Did you say literally? I'm like, you have like eight. Literally, by literally I mean figuratively. There you go. There yeah. You go. Fish 45. Yeah. 40, 46. Yeah. Anyway, we're just nailing these things all over the place. So, fish number 50, going back to Canada. Come on. So I took a break from fishing to take a look at some of the historical and cultural aspects of the lake. And where I'm standing right now is a tiny little island in the middle of the lake. It's called Windigo Rock. And here, centuries ago, native peoples of this area came to carve effigies in the rock, petroglyphs. And they're still here to this day. And people from all over, especially native peoples from this area, they come to give homage to this place, offer gifts become a very sacred place and it's incredible to come on a fishing trip to Canada and yet experience this historical cultural aspect of this lake that so many people that come here to visit never even give a second thought to. I love places in the world like this that are so significant both historically and spiritually. Now comes the best part about fishing in Canada. We pull the boats onto shore and we eat what we caught. You know, when you travel and you want to experience the culture of another country, the quickest way to do that is through their art and their cuisine. And I'm not sure why Canada's cuisine is, well, poutine. I'm not even really sure what it is. So why is poutine the traditional Canadian? What, what the hell? Wait, wait, wait. Poutine is a French thing. 
They brought that crap over here. They put the gravy on the cheese. We've just perfected it now by putting dressing on top of that. Gotcha. So what is poutine? Poutine is French fries with cheese fresh, cheese curds, squeaky cheese, and a good beef gravy on top. And a lot of Canadians eat this? People around the world eat it. They come far and wide for poutine. But why is it Canadian? Just because the French brought just it here? Just because the French started it, yeah. It's a French thing, yeah. Mm. Pretty much. Indians have bannock, right? Newfies have salt cod. The French have their poutine. Albertans have their their uh, beef. And BC has their wheat. Like, hey, right? And Ontario has their fish. Uh, Ontario has the land of the lakes, yes. Yep, exactly. The walleyes. Shore lunch. You don't get shore lunch like this anywhere else in Canada. One place only, here in Canada, Ontario. This is truly Canadian cuisine. I mean, these fish can't get fresher. I mean, we just caught it an hour ago. And then they make these potatoes with these onions and these peppers, and then beans and SpaghettiOs and maple cookies for dessert. I mean, look at that fish. You just can't get fresher than this. I'm not a big fish eater. Sushi, every time I see that, I want to stick a hook in it and throw it in the lake. But this is the only place that I ever eat fish. Year round. I'm just not a big fish eater, but here, I love the fish. So geographically, this place is called the Canadian Shield, but the forest type that's here is called a boreal forest. They're only found here in the north. What's interesting about this place is that you would think that it would be teeming with life up here, and it is, but when it comes right down to reality, the Sonoran Desert has more species diversity than this place does. So behind me, these are North American white pelicans. They are one of eight species in the world. And they're unique because aside from the California condor, these guys have the largest average wingspan of any bird in North America. They just look like pterodactyls, don't they? And what's interesting is, is that when these birds are sexually mature and ready to breed, they will form this horn on their bill. And that signals to the others that they haven't been bred yet this year. So as soon as they do breed and lay eggs, that horn just simply falls off and then they grow a new one next season. So from the Rocky Mountains of Canada to the Maritime Provinces, there are nine species of crayfish. This lake is unique because it has all nine species in it. And I still can't tell them apart. Happy Canada Day. So after an amazing day on the lake, and after the joyous union of plenty of Canadian beef to my gut, we are now going to venture into town to celebrate Canada Day. What time do the fireworks start? Uh, when the sun goes down, apparently. So, midnight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully about 15, 20. All right, cool. It's really kind of cool to be in another country and uh, celebrate their independence, just like we do back at home. <laughs> Damn. Oh, that way. <laughs> oh, that way. Keep going guys, you're getting your own boat. Look at that. 